Let's look at five things you can do in Akihabara in Tokyo, Japan. If you're a gamer or an anime lover, you'll enjoy this. I hope. Number one, visit Super Potato. Super Potato is a heaven for retro gaming. It's got three floors, and whether you want to shop or just bask in the nostalgia of your childhood, you'll love it here. Let's start on the fifth floor. When you walk in, you'll see some classic arcade games, and there's even a little area with some snacks to keep you fueled while you kick people's butts in Street Fighter. Heck, how do I do that? <laughs> so cheap. Oh, jeez. Then make your way down to the 4th and 3rd floors. This is where you'll find the good stuff like many older consoles and their games. Some games are sold for incredibly cheap, like this PlayStation Gundam game is 110 yen, which is more or less a dollar, but obviously prices do vary per item and its condition. If you're a collector, you'll also find brand new, factory sealed, never opened games. Make sure to really look around after you've gone through the aisles of games, there's a bunch of stuff you can buy here, and there are a couple of stations where you can play older games on the spot. Number two, game centers, UFO catchers. Akihabara has so many game centers and most of them have several floors. Most floors are dedicated to prize games and UFO catchers and then the others have arcades and other games. UFO catchers are basically crane games and they are very popular in Japan. The great thing is you can catch almost anything. But if you know me, you know I'm here for the anime stuff, especially if there's Attack on Titan. So that was impossible. Anyway, there are game centers like this all over Japan, but in Akihabara, you can walk out of one and find another one just five steps away. I definitely suggest popping into several of these game centers because you might find many items in one that aren't available at the other. For example, out of all the game centers we visited that day, we could only find these Ghibli card decks at one of them. It's also not limited to the classic crane games. They're really creative with the ways that they get you to set fire to all the money in your wallet. Totally worth it though. Alex just got both of these, one go each. I think we gotta keep going. That's what I do. <laughs> Other than that, I'll give you two tips here. Number one, I know the food items look really appealing and the size is probably calling out to your soul, but in my experience, the amount on the inside hardly ever justifies how much you spent trying to win it. Save your money and go to a convenience store where you can buy this stuff for cheaper. Tip number two, if you look just pathetic enough, you can ask one of the workers to help you out with tips on how to win. Number three, secondhand shops. Okay, so now you see all that stuff you were trying to win at the game centers? Chances are you could find a lot of it in one of Akihabara's secondhand stores. Now you might be thinking, why would I spend all that money trying to win this stuff if I can just buy it? And to that I say, for the thrill. Oh. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Ooh, we got two. Because I'm Levi. Cute. Now, keep in mind, while a lot of the items in these stores may be secondhand, they are in great condition. And once again, if you're a collector, you can definitely find some items that have not been opened. A lot of the goods are anime and game related, but the selection is so huge and varied, it's easy to spend a lot of time in these secondhand stores. Number four, Mandarake. Now, Mandarake is also a secondhand store, but I feel like it deserves its own section in this list because of just how massive it is. It's an eight floor building and each floor has a different theme and an array of goods to choose from. The eighth floor is toys. You'll find plushies, figurines, Gundam model kits, and more. Seventh floor has more toys as well as cards. If you collect or ever collected cards, this is the floor for you. 
The only ones I ever got into when I was younger were Pokemon cards, so naturally that's what I went looking for. Sixth floor has CDs, DVDs, and games. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. There's even a grading system to guide you on the condition of each item. Near me condition, minor damage, damage, severe damage. Fifth floor is called the girls section and magazines. Here you'll find a variety of idol goods, manga, PC games, magazines of course. Fourth floor is the boys section where you'll find a lot of the same stuff the girls floor had, but for boys. There are also some things in the boys section that I'm not gonna show here because I don't want this video to get taken down. Third floor is a manga paradise. You'll find all your favorites here and more. Second floor is for dolls and all of your cosplay related needs. And finally, the first floor is where you can sell your goods to the store. Number five, visit a shrine. The last item on our list is not like the others. Spending the day in Akihabara is very exciting, but can also be very draining. So why not take a short walk away from all of the hustle and bustle to Kanda Myojin Shrine. It's a popular shrine to pray for success in business and matchmaking, but make no mistake, this shrine is still intertwined with the energy of Akihabara. In fact, it has been the host of numerous cultural events, like an exhibition dedicated to Ghibli. During the pandemic, they couldn't hold one of their traditional events, so they recreated the shrine grounds on Animal Crossing for people to join, which I thought was really cool. And the day before the release of the PS5 in Japan, they held a projection show at the shrine. On the day we went to the shrine, we were surprised and lucky to find out it was the last day of a collaboration event with a digital art collective. It was beautiful to see the lights across the grounds, and we even got to borrow a lantern to walk around and take pictures with. There's a lot to explore, so make sure to take a good look around. All in all, it's a great relaxing but interactive way to wrap up a busy day in Akihabara. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. And if you made it till the end, let me know below by commenting what your first stop in Akihabara would be.